You guys all know about the rubble, the, the, the earthquake that occurred in Haiti last January, etc. I don't need to describe all of that. There's one picture. This is what you see all through Port-au-Prince. Uh, rubble. Relief agencies set up a lot of temporary sanitation uh, <coughs> systems, and generally speaking, they were fly-infested, maggot-filled, stinky toilets. Uh, this is one example. This is a, a bucket toilet. That brown stuff in there, that's fecal material. Uh, the bulk of the toilets were pit latrines, holes in the ground, uh, smelled bad, and this is what they did with the contents of the toilet. <coughs> Toilets. Every day they pump them out with a tank truck, drive out to the landfill, and dump it out on the surface of the ground. The first group I worked with is called Soil, S O I L, OurSoil.org. These portable toilets have 60 liter tanks because that's what we could find in Haiti. Tanks, the toilets are built to fit the tanks. 60 liters can be moved by hand and emptied by hand. Uh, the toilets require a cover material, sawdust or something similar to that, and when they're used correctly, there's no odor, no flies, and they can be put anywhere. You could have one right here and nobody would know what it, it was a toilet unless you told them. So they can be in a bedroom, they can be in a tent, you can put a building around them, uh, they're, they're relatively easy and inexpensive, easy to build and inexpensive. Uh, we built these in Mongolia. They, they cost six dollars. Here they're costing about forty, I believe, because uh, twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay. The first trip down there, looking for organic material for these to this toilet system, I found uh, areas of, of sawdust people were dumping and burning. Perfect material for the sanitation system. Now the second trip down was in May. I went down with Patricia Arquette in a, an organization called GiveLove.org. Two of whose members are here now. Lisa Keys here. Lisa, did you raise your hand? And uh, Andrew Larson in the front. Uh, because you may want to talk to these people afterwards, so I'm pointing them out to you. During this trip, we found uh, mountain, this mountain of sawdust, this mountain is produced every 15 days. Every 15 days, and they don't know what to do with it. And we came along with a truck. Uh, they, were, they were happy to give it to us. It's a factory that produces amorous oil, which is a uh, like a sandalwood tree they grind up using steam extraction, the sawdust is clean, smells nice, and is perfect for these toilets. Also, we found acres, acres of sugarcane bagasse at the rum distillery. We also found lots of rum. <laughs> <laughs> the more rum we drank, the, the less bagasse we could find. But, <laughs> Uh, if you look in the back of that picture, there's people standing back there to give you an idea of scale. That, that's our people back there. We're rooting around. All this bagasse, acres, this is probably five feet deep, free for the hauling. And they were loaded for us. So, uh, you know, voila, we hit the jackpot. Uh, not only do we have all of this carbon material, but there is a huge amount of municipal organic material for composting, food material, a huge. <clears throat> so, now this is the first video. I am impressed with how clean they've been keeping them. Looking here. Sure. Full of magnets and stink like hell. Holy shit. So here's the toilet. 
defecation occurs directly into this drum, defecation and urination, and all of the toilet paper, everything goes inside this toilet. After the toilet is used, we have this uh, sawdust that we're using as a cover material. This is the sawdust. It's, uh, it's from a factory that makes amorous oil. It's actually fragrant. It smells uh, flowery. And it goes right into the toilet after the toilet is used so that the contents are completely covered. There's no turds or anything exposed and the flies uh, aren't attracted to it. The lid is always kept down. Um, when you get the drum out, you simply lift that up, slide it out like so. Take the lid. This is a bit more of a looking at it. Feel of shot. Put the lid on. Get right in there. And then set the uh, container, the drum outside, and put an empty one in. And then the drums are set outside with the lid. Somebody will come around and collect them. And then they go into a compost system. The advantage of these toilets is that, as you can see, everything is collected, nothing is going into the environment, nothing's going into the ground, nothing's going into the soil, nothing's going into the water. Everything goes into a compost system where it's all recycled and turned back into soil. It's a hot compost or thermophilic compost system. We, uh, we put uh, a bunch of toilet material in this compost pile yesterday. And this is bagasse on top, sugarcane bagasse. Notice there aren't any flies, and really there's no odor either. You smell anything? Nope. Less than 24 hours later, we reach, we're reading almost 150 degrees Fahrenheit. What I'm finding in these third world situations is that people are collecting the organic material, piling it in open piles on the ground, and there's three problems with that. One, odors. Two, flies. If you're going to call it those toilet material, you cannot have flies. Flies are a disease vector. Three, uh, open piles are labor intensive because you have to turn them, turn them, turn them. And this, using this system, no turning is required. And one thing that you have to always do is cover the compost material with my gods. If you have an open pile like this, it takes a lot more to cover it. Okay. So instead, we build a container so the pile is more vertical, you know, instead of spread out like this. Okay. That way, it takes less bagasse to keep it covered. Okay. It's easier to cover it if it's uh, a flat contained compost pile. And if you keep it covered all the time, there won't be any odor or flies. It's important that uh, Max understands that toilet material can have a lot of disease organisms. These temperatures that are in this pile will kill all of those disease organisms very fast in minutes. That's why we want to put the toilet material in here because it will, it will sanitize it so we don't have disease organisms. We get the pile open, we move this cover material, and then we can dig into the compost, dig a hole, and then the new toilet material will go in the hole. Once it's in there, it will cover it back up like this. Spread the cover material back on it. Like that, four toilet material. Like it up to the south end. 
And then, you're, by pulling it, you're building up the gas around the sides. And then uh, you add the gas again over the top. And that way you end up with a, a, like a blanket of the gas all the way around the sides and on the top of the pump. As long as he can keep the gas on the top, he can pile it up like this. And then once it's completely full, it's from that point on that you start to count how much time. So four months, six months after it's completely filled up. You always have to have a base in the compost bin before you add any toilet material. And then once you start putting material into the bin, it can be this, it can be toilet material, it can be any organic material. But you have to follow the, the rule, keep the goss around the edge and on the top at all times. You fill it all the way up, put a nice thick layer of the goss on the top, and then it's finished. It's like putting a loaf of bread in the oven. You don't touch it. You don't add anything to it. You don't, you don't mess with it at all. You just leave it alone. And then you build a, 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 the next bin and you start that one. The same. You lay out an area, you dig the base of it out to create a bowl effect in the bottom. And it's, it's easy to do. You're just scraping the dirt and throwing it around the inside of the edges. And then you put a biological sponge on the bottom, a, a significant thick layer of clean organic material. Then uh, this this is a this is how you manage leachate because th this is all the uh, uh, excess liquid will be collected. Typically, leachate is caused by too much rainfall in a in a pile compost pile that's still active. Once the pile is done, it doesn't matter. What I just got through telling these guys is when they, when they fill this bin, when the bin is full, this is a hard thing for them to under, for people to understand. Once it's full, leave it alone. Don't touch it. Cover it over and just let it cook like a, like a loaf of bread in the oven is what I'm telling them. But the, the more I thought about it, I'm thinking more chocolate cake, you know, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's right. so not messy and not smelly that we actually, as a, we took USAID out there and made them practically eat lunch on top of these toilets, and they just didn't get it until right. they saw it. If you smell odor, you need to put more cover material. It's that simple. But if you can smell or see any flies, you need more cover material. It doesn't take much. You have to use the right cover material. If it's a bulky cover material, it doesn't work. Air can get through. If air can get through it, odors can come out. Odors can come out, flies will be attracted. So you have to have the right consistency, even the right moisture content. Fine grain and with, this, with some moisture is, is ideal. Wasn't Haiti where they're having the problem with cholera? And, That's right. And this will take care of that, right? Or That's help? right. Cholera organisms can't survive the compost environment. But all that sewage that they're dumping and spreading, putting in the ground, that spreads cholera. So we're trying to get people to see that there is this alternative. Yes. Compost sanitation as an alternative. Um, when I was there, I experienced some pretty heavy rainfall. So I was wondering if you had covered to not get the pipes too wet. Yeah, well, I just tell throw a tarp over. That's the easiest, simplest, fastest way to cover. It doesn't doesn't cost much money. There, it, 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 it's a composter's heaven down there. There's so much stuff, organic material, uh, just basically gone to waste. Uh, and the temperature, when I was doing those little videos I was showing, I was over 100 degrees. And you pile that stuff up, just stand back in it because it starts heating up immediately. The, those bacteria love. That climate. Yeah. So it's, it's like a composter's heading down there.